These cooperative demonstrations of technology play a key role in transitioning our technologies from a concept to equipment that is deployed in support of the warfighter. Which should, in reality, be the main focus for all of us. They illustrate in these times of enduring austerity and increasing global challenge to NATO and to the nations. How technological innovation has the potential to drive down expenses while improving complex operational capabilities. The demonstration which you are attending today is focused on integrated munitions health management, which is the expert's language for how to ensure the safe manufacture, transport, storage and use of complex and costly weapons containing explosives such as guided missiles. I'm a logistician and uh, throughout my entire career I of course perfectly understand and realize how important integrated munition health management is for safety reasons. Most of us think that just because a, a munition has been made and put into a bunker someplace that it will always be ready. But in fact, these things deteriorate over time. So if you don't use them, you could lose them. And that's what this integrated munitions health management is all about. The Applied Vehicle Technology Panel of STO has been very proactive, developing and guiding technologies to improve the management of critical assets. The munition technology to be demonstrated is ready to be used today. The approach is already guiding requirements to improve the safety and reliability of some of the most expensive and operationally relevant assets. The fundamental ethos is centered upon smart defense, the linking and capability and cooperation of nations. Would you all like to please come closer, please? Thank you. So with respect to safety, we can use the technology with existing safety measures to enhance safety decisions. With respect to cost, we can defer disposal and we can reduce in-service surveillance efforts. With respect to performance, we know the actual condition. Availability, we know the safe remaining life. And with interoperability, sharing and integration across nations enables a shared common capability. Sensors can be as simple as temperature, humidity, acceleration, as well as normal stress. Otherwise, most of the data is transferred to whatever operating base, ultimately to a central data management system that stores all the data as well as the critical analysis that goes on throughout. That data is then transferred into a data of analysis, most cases an automated process, that gives you your service life, reliability, and performance on an individual or a small lot basis. Nowadays, this means destructive testing of random samples of the worldwide fielded missile population. In this approach, no distinction is made between individual missiles and one single safe lifetime is estimated for all missiles, regardless of their individual operational history. This results in a justly conservative safe life to ensure every missile worldwide to be on board. According to the aging model for this propellant, there's 2.5 times more aging after one month of storage at 30 degrees Celsius compared to storage at 20 degrees Celsius. There is a big difference. So a couple of days ago, it was still uh, in, in a cold bunker somewhere in, in the Netherlands, uh, close to The Hague at TNO. It's inside this room now for a couple of days, and you see that uh, yeah, we're creating a lot of heat being here together, so temp temperature went up. Now the question comes up, what's the safe remaining life? How long can I use my items before disposing them? The enablers are two. One is the HUMS, the Health and Usage Monitoring System. It is basically an environmental data logger measuring the key parameters at each individual MISA. It will be installed on the MISA. The next enabler is the companion motor. It is an instrumented rocket motor manufactured at the same time as a lot of uh, rocket motors is manufactured and therefore having exactly the same solid rocket propellant inside. Same material, same initial conditions. Let's now walk to the hardware. This is a, a full instrumented companion motor. The first thing you see here is that it has sensors, a temperature and humidity indication embedded in the motor electronics, delivering the average temperature. The condition is good, so the motor is uh, ready to be used. And this enables really shared stockpile. Essentially, you can basically act like a football manager, keeping the best players for the Champions League and the, uh, the players which are more tired for the next game for the, for the second game. 
warheads for torpedoes often find themselves in the fleet for 20, 30, even 40 years. Uh, and in fact, many of them uh, were made with the intention of being able to keep them in the fleet up to 50 or even 70 years. If I have data loggers and sensors aboard each individual torpedo warhead, I'm no longer uh, beholden to that rule that I have to dequalify an entire lot of warheads because two test badly. I can actually pick the ones that I want to test, and I can also tell you which ones in the fleet have seen the easiest life. Um, but I'll also hopefully be able to predict future service life. If I understand the science much better and can apply that to a better uh, life uh, model, then I'll be able to predict the future condition out maybe 5, 10, 15 years in the future, which helps me plan my acquisition much better. Let's summarize the key messages. First. Improper munitions management compromises safety and increases catastrophic risk. Second, the lack of visibility into munitions environment exposure and unexpected effects forces premature retirement and increased cost. Third, IMHM is a proven approach to identifying accelerated aging and unsafe munitions and extending the safe life of munitions. Safety, the combination of technology and in-service sur surveillance to inform safety decisions. Cost, the deferral of asset disposal due to longer service life and reduced expense for in-service surveillance. Performance, greater understanding of current and future condition to perform mission objectives. Availability, improved knowledge about safe remaining life of munition systems. And last, interoperability, supporting collaboration within and across NATO countries and enabling the creation of a shared capability stockpile. We're actually working on through a, uh, a, me a memorandum of understanding signed at the recent NATO summit that is looking at the future question of how we uh, stockpile our expensive weapon systems together and make them available to each other so that they can be used and can be available when needed. So I would really congratulate the team because um, they showed from my perspective the future of health management of munitions for uh, NATO. Um, they not only showed on a single technology level but also on the systems level that there are uh, solutions available to really work this issue of health management of munitions. Uh, and uh, I could really foresee that um, at least these technologies uh, will be implemented uh, for the more sophisticated and expensive missiles like cruise missiles.